Hello, my name is Noah Gonzalez and I am a student at Qualtas Training Institute. My lecturer's name is Ms. Eva Irving and this is my final assignment. Today I'm going to be going over what phlebotomy is, the roles of phlebotomists, and practices that are important in carrying out the phlebotomy procedure. Sure. Now what is phlebotomy? The word phlebotomy has Greek origins, coming from the word phlebos, meaning vein, and tome, meaning incision. Phlebotomy refers to the opening of a vein with the purpose of obtaining blood. Phlebotomists are responsible for collecting blood from the patient, collecting blood from the patient, for testing and diagnosis of the patient, to carry out blood transfusions, and for therapeutic purposes in the case of polycythemia. Polycythemia is a medical condition that causes patients to have a high concentration of red blood cells in the blood. This makes the blood cells to reach vital organs. Phlebotomists are medical personnel who draw blood through a process called venipuncture. Venipuncture is performed by puncturing the vein with a needle to obtain blood. There are three systems which can be used to perform venipuncture. The syringe system, the syringe system, the evacuated tube system, and the winged infusion set. Alternatively, phlebotomists can use another procedure called capillary puncture to obtain blood. This reduces the amount of blood that needs to be drawn and is the preferred method of blood draw for infants. Capillary, pun capillary puncture involves the severing of capillaries and the skin to obtain blood. Now we're going to look at some common equipment used by phlebotomists to perform the phlebotomy procedure. These can include tourniquets, alcohol prep pads, sterile gauze, needles, needle holders, evacuated blood collection tubes, syringes, syringe transfer devices, and personal protective equipment such as gloves, face masks, lab coats, and face shields. Now that we have that out of the way, we can begin to look at the phlebotomy procedure itself. We'll begin by looking at sites in which the veni puncture formed. The veni puncture procedure is performed on veins in the antecubital fossa of the arm. The antecubital fossa is a triangular depression on the anterior surface of the elbow. In patients, there are typically two main patterns for the veins of the antecubital fossa. The H pattern and in the H pattern, the first choice vein is the median cubital vein. The median cubital vein is well anchored and has no adjacent nerves or arteries, which may pose a risk in the venipuncture procedure. The cephalic vein is located on the thumb side of the arm. This vein is fairly well anchored but more difficult to, but more difficult to palpate than the median cubital. As such, it is the second choice vein. The last choice vein for venipuncture is the basilic vein. The basilic vein is typically harder to palpate and is also more painful during the phlebotomy procedure. For the M pattern, the first choice vein is the median cubital vein followed by the median cephalic, with the median basilic being the last choice vein. When performing the venipuncture procedure, the phlebotomist has a wide range of needles to select from. The gauge of the needle denotes the needle diameter, with a larger number representing a smaller diameter. For example, a 21 gauge needle, which is the most commonly used needle, has a wider diameter than a 23 gauge needle. The 21 gauge needle also has a smaller diameter than the 18 gauge needle, for example, which is commonly used to perform blood transfusions. Each needle gauge is represented using a specific the evacuated tube system. The needle has two ends. One end is screwed into the tube holder to transfer blood to the evacuated tubes and the other end is used to enter the patient's vein. As you can see, I've left a picture which shows the needles used for the evacuated tube system and a table which shows you the needle gauge which corresponds to the needle color and the needle gauge that corresponds to the diameter of the needle or the needle lumen. Next, we will compare and contrast the two main methods for performing the venipuncture procedure. The evacuated tube system or the ETS system and the tube system or the ETS system and the syringe system. The ETS system is comprised of a tube holder, the multi-sample needle, and the evacuated tube. The evacuated tube is a sterile blood collection vial which has a specified amount of air removed. It may contain requested. 
The accurate vacuum that is created allows specific amounts of blood to be sucked into the tube to maintain the correct blood to additive ratio. The multi-sample needle is comprised of a bevel, a shaft, and a threaded hub, and another needle at the bottom. Well, at the bottom. When entering the vein, the bevel must be pointed upwards and the needle has to be held at a 30 degree angle. The threaded hub is used to secure the needle to the tube holder. The needle hub is also transparent and can be used to see the initial flash of blood, which indicates that a vein This is important since the vein must be punctured before the evacuated tube is attached to the system. The syringe system is comprised of the needle, the needle hub, the rubber stopper, the barrel, the plunger, and the needle cup. Unlike the ETS system, when performing ETS system, when performing venipuncture with the syringe system, a syringe transfer device is required to transfer blood to the respective collection tubes without contamination. Earlier, I mentioned the blood collection tubes. These tubes are also referred to as vacuum cleaner tubes. There are several types of vacuum cleaner the tube type is determined by the additives which they contain. Each tube type has a specified color which allows phlebotomists to easily select the correct tube. Phlebotomists must be able to select the correct tube type for the test requested as some additives can cause inaccurate test results. Tubes must also be drawn in a specified order to prevent cross-contamination of additives between tubes that may affect results. The order in which these tubes are collected is referred to as the order of draw. The order of draw starts with blood culture tubes. These tubes can allow bacteria to grow to determine the presence of bacteria in the blood. The blood culture tube is used by the immunology and microbiology department. Next in the order of draw is the light blue stopper tube. The light blue tube contains a sodium citrate additive which binds to calcium additive which binds to calcium to prevent clot formation. The light blue tube is used to perform coagulation tests. This is followed by the red top tube. The red top tube does not contain additives but may contain silica fragments to promote clotting. Red top tubes are used by the chemistry and they allow blood to clot naturally to obtain blood serum. Next in the order of draw is the gold SST tube. The gold or tiger top tube is a serum separator tube. SST tubes contain a gel which separates the cells on the blood from the serum for testing. It is used, it is used by the chemistry department. The light blue, red and gold top tubes must be inverted 4 to 5 times after collection. All other tubes must be inverted 8 to 10 times after collection. The inversions allows the additives to be properly mixed with the blood. Green top PST tube or plasma separator tubes. These tubes contain a heparin additive which prevents clotting. These tubes are used to perform a wide range of chemistry tests. They are used, obviously, by the chemistry department. Next in the order of draw is the EDTA lavender. Next in the order of draw is the EDTA lavender top tubes. The lavender tubes contain an additive called EDTA, which preserves cell morphology and binds to calcium to prevent clotting. The EDTA tube is used to perform tests by the hematology department. The pink top is identical to the lavender top tube in terms of additives, with the only difference being that it is used by the blood bank for blood type screening. Finally, in the order of draw is the gray top tube. These tubes contain sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. The sodium fluoride is responsible for slowing glycolysis and for The potassium oxalate binds to the calcium and prevents clotting. The order of draw when performing venipuncture slightly differs from the order of draw when performing capillary puncture. The capillary tube order of draw starts with the anticoagulant tubes, with the pink and lavender top starts with the anticoagulant tubes with the pink and lavender top tubes being the first, followed by the green, red, and finally gold top tubes. Blood collected from the capillaries has a high exposure to the ear. As a result, they can tend to clot quickly. This is why 
and the coagulant tubes and the plasma separator tubes which requires that coagulation is collected last. In order to perform the phlebotomy procedure, phlebotomists must assemble their phlebotomy tree. This tree contains all of the materials which a phlebotomist may use. Components of the phlebotomy tree typically include gloves, 70% isopropyl alcohol, tourniquets, plasters, alcohol prep pads, syringes, evacuated tubes, loop holders, needles, and gauze, etc. After, after preparing the phlebotomy tree, the phlebotomist is ready to meet with the patient. Before beginning the venipuncture procedure, it is important to introduce yourself and to identify the patient. Allow the patient to have a seat in the phlebotomy chair. You should review the requisition form and check for any required diet restrictions, then when they have passed it. Verify the patient's name and date of birth and confirm whether or not they have a latex allergy. Next, it is important to obtain the patient's consent before obtaining the procedure. Sanitize your hands using 70% isopropyl alcohol and don the gloves. Prepare the and don the gloves. Prepare the necessary equipment for the draw, such as the required colored tubes. Begin to prepare the patient by asking them to extend the arm you intend to use for the procedure. Tie the tourniquet on the patient's arm and ask the patient to make a fist. Select the suitable vein and release the tourniquet. The tourniquet is released to allow for blood flow. The tourniquet should never be left on for more than one minute. Using the alcohol prep pads, clean the site using a circular pattern, starting from the inside moving out. If the ETS method is being used, assemble the ETS while the site is assemble the ETS while the site is ear drying. Do not blow or fan the site as this can lead to contamination. If the syringe system is being used, use the time to tighten the needle on the syringe and expel all the air from the barrel. Next, reapply the tourniquet. Uncap the needle and inspect it to in insert the needle into the vein at a 30 degree angle in a steady, swift, forward motion. Once blood flow is established, insert the evacuated tubes, inverting the necessary amount of times upon removal. In the case of the syringe system, once blood flow is established, pull back on the plunger, aspirate, aspirate until the necessary fill level is achieved. Next, release the tourniquet and hold the gauze above the puncture site without applying pressure. Carefully remove the needle and then press on the puncture site with the gauze or ask the patient to do so. Activate the needle safety feature and dispose of the, activate the needle safety feature and dispose of the needle in the sharps container. While the patient is applying pressure to the site, label the tubes with the patient's full name, date of birth, time of collection and age. The test requested and the phlebotomist initials is also required. Tubes must be labeled while the patient is still. Phlebotomists should not label tubes after the patient has left. After labeling the tubes, check to see if the bleeding has stopped and apply a bandage and see the patient out. Dispose of the contaminated materials, remove the gloves, and follow hand hygiene procedures. Then, transport the specimen to the lab. Following special handling it may not have usable veins on the antecubital area. In these cases, the phlebotomist can perform a draw on the hand vein, instead using the winged infusion set. When performing blood draws on the hand veins, the tourniquet is tied proximal to the wrist. The hand is placed in a pronated position with the palm position with the palm facing down. The vein is then selected from the back of the hand and the normal venipuncture procedure is followed. Veins should never be used from the front of the wrist as these veins are surrounded by nerves, are close to arteries and are also close to tendons and, po tendons and pose a risk during the phlebotomy procedure. To perform the draw, pinch the wings of the butterfly needle and insert it into the vein at a 30 degree angle and then let go of the needle. Attach the evacuated tubes to the ETS holder until the required fill is met. However, venipuncture is not always the answer. Some patients such as burn patients and infants require capillary puncture when acquiring a blood sample. For infants, capillary puncture is performed on the heel using a method called the heel stick. Only the medial and lateral plantar surfaces are used for the heel puncture. These parts are thick and fleshy, 
these parts are thick and fleshy and prevent accidental sticking of the calcaneus or the heel bone. For adults, capillary puncture is performed on the middle and ring fingers of the non-dominant hand. These fingers tend to have a thinner callus formation compared to the others while still being fleshy enough to avoid hitting the bone. After a suitable site is selected and cleaned, the incision is made perpendicular to the fingerprints to allow a proper blood drop to form and to prevent blood from running down the hand. The first drop of blood is then wiped away as it contains interstitial fluid that may lead to erroneous test results. Gur is then angled downward allowing gravity to assist the flow of blood. Blood is collected quickly into the necessary blood collection device to prevent blood clot formation and contamination. When the necessary amount of blood is collected, place a gauze over the site and apply firm pressure. Apply firm pressure. Sometimes, phlebotomists may encounter problem sites for venipuncture. For patients with a mastectomy, blood should not be drawn from the same side as the mastectomy. Blood should not be drawn from burn sites. Blood should not be drawn near fistulas or shunts as there are patients lifeline during dialysis or thrombosed veins and blood should not be drawn from a site with a hematoma. Other patient problems that may be encountered by a phlebotomist can include allergies to latex. For these patients, latex-free tourniquets and latex-free gloves are used. Patients who are on anticoagulant treats are used. Patients who are on anticoagulant treatment or blood thinning medications such as aspirin may bleed excessively during the procedure. This can lead to a hematoma. For these patients, it is important to apply pressure for 5 minutes and closely monitor the patient after the draw. Some patients use an intense fear of needles. This may cause them to pull back, scream, or even faint. It is the phlebotomist's responsibility to calm and reassure the patient in order to successfully perform the blood draw. However, the patient has the right to refuse a blood draw. If the patient refuses to have their blood drawn, do not take the blood sample from them. The patient must sign a form to indicate that they have declined to have the blood drawn. It is important for phlebotomists to know how to deal with patients who have fainted. If a patient has fainted during the phlebotomy procedure, phlebotomists should, phlebotomists should discontinue the draw. Release the tourniquet and remove and discard of the needle as quickly as possible. Apply pressure to the site while having the patient lower their head and breathe deeply. Physically support the patient and with their permission, loosen any tight collar or tie which may be compressed to the forehead and at the back of the neck and have someone stay with the patient until they have fully recovered. If the patient does not respond, first aid personnel should be contacted. This incident should then be documented according to facility protocol. This will conclude my final video assignment presentation. You can find the resources that I use in the video description below. Thank you for watching.